the year 1665. Due to an outbreak of bubonic plague, Cambridge University shuts down and students are sent home. Now, young Isaac Newton gathers his belongings, packs his books, and travels north to the family estate in Lincolnshire. Now imagine the following. You and he, one afternoon, are in his backyard. You're shooting the breeze, goofing around, joking around, and in a moment of hysterical laughter, Izzy, as you fondly called him, bumps into an apple tree. A piece of fruit falls and bonks Izzy smack in the head. There, right then and there, an epiphany. And you just witnessed the discovery of gravity. Now, how cool is that? <laughs> to actually be at a game-changing historical moment. Game-changing historical moments. You know, over the course of this last year, we have all experienced a game-changing historical moment. A corona-driven vaccine revolution. Let's go back to December 2019, lurking among the stalls of a seafood market in Wuhan, a mysterious, dark, ominous virus emerges. And in the fullness of time, it will infect over 200 million people worldwide, killing men, women, and children. A virus that has caused total global havoc, a virus that has traumatized us all. So have you ever thought about what viruses are exactly? Viruses are basically just USB flash drives, protein-coded RNA or DNA memory chips, that's it. Now, viruses are not living organisms, just as flash drives are not computers. It's only when the USB inserts into its corresponding port that information can be transferred from the flash drive to then instruct the computer on how and what to perform. Viruses are basically the same. They too have proteins, they're USBs, and they insert into the receptor, and only then that RNA can transfer into the cell, which orchestrates the production of new viruses that emerge. These viruses go on to infect new cells, producing more and more viruses causing more and more damage, and ultimately leading to what could be a life-threatening disease until, until our immune system kicks in. Specialized white blood cells, B cells, encounter and are intercepting the viruses. They study them, and in response, they produce antibodies, antibodies that bind the spike protein. And in doing so, it blocks the access to the receptor, and therefore, infection is prevented. Now, with each round of interaction of virus with its B cell, the B cells upgrade. They improve, they better understand, they produce better antibodies. And some of these upgraded special force B cells are stored as memory B cells, such that in the event, maybe a month, maybe a year later, after we've actually recovered from a life-threatening disease, should we encounter the virus again, memory is called in, antibodies are produced, the viruses, the intruders, are knocked out, all without having to experience any disease at all. We are said to be immune. Now, wouldn't it be awesome if we could safely pre-train the immune system, store memory, preempt disease, 
all without having to experience illness. Well, this is exactly what vaccines are all about. Vaccines are basically boot camp training of our immune system. Vaccines contain protein of the virus, if you will, the hardware of the virus. And when we vaccinate, the B cells have the opportunity to methodically interrogate and understand the vaccine hardware, and then subsequently store memory. In fact, when you think about it, all the vaccines that you know that we give our kids are all what I would call hardware vaccines. Vaccines that all contain inactivated, safe viral protein to some degree, in some form or another. Maybe killed virus, or attenuated virus, or simply purified spike protein. Now, for each disease, years of research and development have been invested in order to generate its corresponding vaccine. So, in times of urgency, emergence of a pandemic, you can ask yourself, couldn't it be done differently? Could it be another way? Safer, quicker, possibly cheaper. However, without compromise. 30 years ago, Katie Karako, a young Hungarian biochemist, was doing research at the University of Pennsylvania. She had an idea. She said, you know, hardware vaccines use protein. Wouldn't it be cool if we could use software, the recipe to produce the viral protein in our body? Could we use RNA, an RNA vaccine? Now, this was a totally out-of-the-box idea. In fact, so innovative and so challenging, Katie was the subject of much ridicule. And in fact, she had a real hard time raising funds to support her research. And she couldn't get her promotions. However, here, perseverance prevailed. She, along with her colleague, Drew Weissman, ultimately got the RNA idea to actually work. And remarkably, the RNA vaccine was found to be exceptionally effective and certainly a game changer in our fight against corona. But you may ask, something's curious. Hardware, we inject viral protein. With software, we inject RNA that codes for viral protein. What's the difference? Well, when I was a kid in Haifa, there was a bakery just outside of our school. Now, I'm a bit embarrassed. Periodically, sometimes, I'd cut class. <laughs> I'd sneak out of school and go to the bakery. It always fascinated me. The baker in his white apron and his white cap, all flour dusted, and taking out of the hot glowing oven these trays of hot, piping, freshly baked rolls. Now I would stand there looking meekly and waiting until we had eye contact. And when our eyes met, I would say, can I buy two? Now, I would take one roll and I would put it into my backpack. And the other, well, obviously, you know. I mean, who can resist the intoxicating fragrance of hot, fresh baked bread? Now, on my way home, I would think, oh, the other roll. And I would eat it happily. And sometimes it struck me rather curious. How is this possible? Two rolls exactly the same, but uh -uh, not the same at all. So when we inject RNA into a cell, it produces freshly baked hot, fragrant protein, more authentic, more closely resembling 
the presentation of the viral proteins that are generated in genuine viral infection. Now, just a few months ago, 900,000 people were infected with coronavirus daily. 15,000 people died of COVID-19 daily. Now, of course, we all know we're not out of the woods yet. Delta is indeed challenging. However, as more and more people take the vaccine, as more and more countries vaccinate, Coronavirus is being corralled in with nowhere to go. Newton's epiphany, Katie's epiphany, and her diligence have led to a game-changing historical event, a vaccine revolution. Think about it. Recognize it. Embrace it. Thank you.